All right, folks, welcome back. It is time for a video number 14 in our Mark 262 series. The point of this series is to duplicate this stuff. This is the Black Hills 77 grain OTM. It's used by the military and called Mark 262, Mod 1. It uses a 77 grain Sierra Match King with a cantaloupe, and we happen to have a big old box of those right there. Now, being video number 14, we have tested a whole bunch of different powders, and today we're going to test two more. The first is going to be Alliant Power Pro Varmint. This is a weird powder to me. I don't have a lot of experience. This is the first can of this stuff I've ever, I've ever had. If you go to the Alliant website on their load data, they only have load data up to 55 grains bullets and the max charge weight for that uh, for that 55 grain load on their site is 24.7 grains so if you went by Alliance load data for one you wouldn't even think that this is probably an appropriate powder for a 77 grain bullet and also if it was I mean you're looking at charge weights down in the 22 grain range probably you know not a whole lot of velocity now I bought this powder to use in 6.5 Grendel Sierra recently came out with some load data and they showed really good velocities in the Grendel with Power Pro Varmint. So I bought a pound, been playing with it, and it works out really well. And over in that cartridge, the charge weights are pretty close to accurate 2520, which we've used in this series. And the load we came up with for this guy was 25.2 grains. So the pieces just didn't really fit together. It, it doesn't make sense in my mind that these two powders can be pretty close to one another in a 6.5 Grendel, but you come over to a 223 and you're looking at 25 grains of accurate 2520, but more like 22 grains or something like that with Power Pro Varmint. I don't even know if you guys are able to follow what the hell I'm trying to get across, but let's just move on. Because if I had had my eyes open, the Hornady manual has got Power Pro Varmint data in their 556 NATO section. And with their 75 grain bullets, they show a max charge of 25.4 grains. And even if we go back a section to their 223 Remington uh, service rifle data section, where the pressures are a little bit lower, they show a max charge of 24.2 grains. And further to that comparison I had made with Accurate 2520, the Hornady uh, data actually shows higher charge weights with Varmint than they do with Accurate 2520. I know I've probably lost all of you. This doesn't make sense. Just know that the load data for Power, Power Pro Varmint at Alliant seems way off, way off. So what we're gonna do, oh, and an another thing here in the, uh, Hornady book, if we go up to Hornady's 80 grain bullets, they shoot a little bit longer overall length. But even with their 80 grain bullets, they show 25.4 grain max with Power Pro Varmint with those bullets as well. So we're just going to use their data for our 77 grain Sierra Match King. It might get us into trouble, but I'm hoping that it won't. That means our max charge is going to be 25.4 grains. Three tenths of a grain increments takes us down to 24.2. So that's that's the uh, that's the plan with Power Pro Varmint. The second powder today is going to be Vitivori N140. The last video we shot Vitivori N540. The 500 series powder, the 540 is kind of their high energy version that's in this same uh, region of the burn rate chart, but this is the uh, this is the standard one. This powder shot really really well for us in everything we've used it for. So we're going to use it here in this video. We're going to get our max charge from Vitivori. The Vitivori website has data for this bullet. They show a max charge of 24.5 grains. Oh no, that's the Sierra. Vitivori says 24.7. Sierra says 24.5. We'll go ahead and use 24.7 as our max. We'll do three tenths of a grain increments and we'll uh, start at 23.5. Same primer as always, the CCI 41, which has served us well. We did use some Remington seven and a halfs earlier on in this series, but we've kind of settled on the CCI 41 here lately. The brass is Lake City, and I've actually already made a lot of progress here with these loads. I've already weighed out our charges and I'm ready to seat bullets. I figured by episode 14, we've seen the loading process enough times. One thing I do want to do in this video though, is have a little closer look at this guy. This is my Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die that we used in the last video. I just recently got a replacement seating stem for it. And in that last video, we saw a lot of difference in overall length between compressed and non-compressed loads. I'm already afraid that I've cracked this new seating stem and it's junk again. So what I want to do is tear this guy apart. We'll have a quick look at the seating stem and then we'll move on to seating bullets for today. And we'll just use my standard Redding die that we've used throughout the rest of the series for bullet seating today because I think this guy's boogered up. Let's go up close and find out. We actually might not have to tear it all the way apart. Pop it loose here in the middle. Eh, that's not a good sign. 
the chamber portion here is having a tough time coming off of the seating stem. There she blows. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take it all the way out. All right, so it does have some marks on it, but I think they're just scratches. Can't tell if any of them are actually cracks. But it definitely got scratched a touch as we were pulling it out here just now. So I went and grabbed a little bit of Scotch Brite and cleaned it up just a touch. And I can't see anything that I'm sure is a crack. I think I just got it scratched a little bit. So yeah, we'll revisit this dude later. But today I just want to switch over and use the trusty old Redding standard seating die. So the Vitivori N140 loads are going to be pretty darn compressed. I actually took the time to tap on each case and settle the powder a little bit as I was weighing out the charges. So let's see, our official overall length number is 2.246, but somewhere around 2.250 will work as well. Get down just a little bit more. Now the case fill with Power Pro Varmint is pretty darn good as well. I think at the top end with this guy, we're going to have ourselves a pretty full case. All right, I think we're in good shape here. Our long, longest case is 2.250. Got a couple that are 2.247. There's a 2.248. So that's pretty close. And then we do apply a little bit of crimp with our Leaf Factory crimp die. That feels just a little bit heavy. I've crimped the first two pieces and they felt just a touch heavy, so I'll lighten this guy up just a little. Yeah, that does, that feels better. So now that we've got our overall length dialed in, let me jump forward to our highest charge of Vitivori N140. Let's see if it crunches a little. Yep, it definitely did crunch a little. Go ahead and seat a couple of them. Yep, that definitely is a little bit crunchy, and I'm seeing a little bit more of the cantaloupe than I think I was seeing a few minutes ago. So let's see if these stretched out. 2.258, 2.262. So I'm gonna to need to watch my die settings here. I'm gonna put these back in their proper row and I'll finish seating them once I naturally get to that row. But as I go forward, I'm gonna to have to be watchful of our overall length and adjust my seating die as necessary. So I made it to the max charge of Power Pro Varmint, and it feels like there is definitely still a little bit of case capacity left. So if 25.4 grains of Varmint doesn't get us where we need to be, and we don't run into pressure signs, we do have a little bit of case capacity left. All right, now this is the starting charge of N140. Let's see if it's also crunchy. Yep, it is. So it looks like our whole range here is gonna be compressed with N140. This first one's not that long, 2.251, but let me seat all five of them and then take an average. Might need to tweak the die a little bit already. And I'll go ahead and run these guys through the die twice, like up and in once and then turn it a little bit and do it again. Maybe that'll help a little. Probably not. All right, so the links are between 2.250 and 2.258. So my average has definitely moved up a little bit. I'll tell you what, we'll take this one that is 2.250 and we'll bring it down to maybe 2.246 or something like that. Let's see where that puts us. A little bit more. All right, this part's pretty darn boring. We've been over it enough times. So I think we'll just end the reloading part. Yep, there. There we're good, so that one's ready to crimp. And I'll just see you all out on the range. All right, folks, it is time to rock and roll. We've got a target at 100 yards. My gun has an 18 inch white oak armament barrel with a one and eight twist. We are shooting through my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor and my Magneto Speed Chronograph, BCM upper and hand guard. We're shooting off a bipod, a gg and bipod and a rear bag. And let's get started. First up is Alliant Power Pro Varmint, 24.2 grains is up first. If I can ever get around in the chamber. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this uh, Lancer mag, sometimes it just doesn't want to go all the way up in there. Like occasionally, I need to lock my bolt back to snap the magazine all the way in. All right, here we go, 24.2, completely cold gun.
All right, holy moly. We are already at 2,722 feet per second. Let me chase down that piece of brass, make sure we're not in trouble. All right, so the piece of brass does look okay. Yeah, the piece of brass is fine. So we're gonna go ahead and continue shooting, but at these sorts of velocities, there's no way we're gonna be able to make it through all five groups here with uh, Power Pro Varmint. I don't know, let's find out. Okay, so our velocity actually calmed down a whole lot. That first shot was 27.22, the second shot was 26.83, and then the final three were in the 26.60s. So hopefully that was just a cold bore thing. The good news is the brass all looked fine, so we are moving on, 24.5 grains is next. All right, so believe it or not, our brass still looks just fine. Our average velocity is up to 27.38, but it's uh, kind of all over the place. We had numbers all the way up to 27.72 and down to 27.16. So this powder's not really impressing me with the velocity consistency. All right, 24.8 grains is next. All right, folks, I really can't believe this. We hit our velocity target, we're up to 27.69. We finally shot a respectable standard deviation of 11.0, nothing wrong with a, with a good old 11. And we shot our best group so far. To top it all off, the brass looks perfectly fine. And we're gonna be able to move forward. I can't believe it, 25.1 grains. Let's see if it'll group. Yeah, so it looks like our, our accuracy kind of went to crap again. But believe it or not, I'm finally just seeing the first little bit of an ejector swipe on some of the brass. It is very light. It's so light that normally I would just continue, but I'm not gonna shoot this last group. We're gonna be at 2,850 feet per second, and I know that that's impossible to do within reasonable pressures. So let's just leave it here. 2817 is insane. These are the best pressure signs we've seen from any powder at this, at this uh, velocity level. I mean, Power Pro 2000 MR would probably be second, uh, second best at this point. So these Power Pro powders have been impressive, folks. They really have. So I'm gonna take a break for just a minute, rest my eyes a little bit, let the gun cool down just a little bit. One thing, it is extremely hot today. I'll tell you what, I've been really good about keeping track of the weather in these Mark 262 videos, but it slipped my mind in the last video. Although it is May 15th, it is 95 degrees. Humidity 37% and pressure at 1,010.8 and falling. All right, time to stop gabbing. Let's let the gun cool down and move on. All right, so it's time to lower our velocity expectations, I think. We're moving over to Vitivory N140, and I don't think we'll be hitting 2,800 feet per second with this guy. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I do feel like we're probably gonna shoot some really good groups. First up is 23.5 grains. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is kind of what we expected from Vitivori N140. Low velocities, but a really nice group. Moving on, 23.8 grains is next.
You know what? We're taking some pretty decent little jumps in velocity. We may get closer than I thought we would. Next up, 24.4 grains. Okay, the funny thing is I'm actually seeing more pressure signs on this N140 brass at these modest velocity levels than I was with the super fast Power Pro varmint loads. Pretty weird. But they're still okay. I feel okay going ahead and shooting this last uh, last group, 24.7 grains. All right, nice to see it maintain its accuracy all the way up to the very top. But unfortunately, we went one step too far. Got some pretty distinct ejector marks and one nice little burr raised up in that last batch of brass. So let's get packed up, get back to the bench. Okay, welcome back, folks. I've changed my mind. After seeing those pressure signs on the N140 brass, I'm sitting here thinking like, why, why did I stop on varmint? Purely velocity? I mean, that's really it. There weren't any pressure signs. So let's go ahead, we might blow our face off here, that's fine. Let's go ahead and shoot it. 25.4 grains of Power Pro Varmint. We might be opening a black hole here, I don't know. Okay, so accuracy went to crap, and we definitely got some light swipes on the primers there. Yeah, oh, whatever. At least we didn't blow our face off. At least we know now. All right, let's get back to the bench. All right, folks, let's have a look at some brass. Our last five rows here are from today. First five columns were Power Pro Varmint. First of all, let's look at the middle charge for Power Pro Varmint. This is the one that hit our velocity target. It was 2,769 feet per second. And I'll show you all five pieces. All right, as far as I can tell, this stuff is flawless. Primers are still nice and rounded. No obvious ejector marks. Just good stuff. All right, now let's jump forward to our max charge. This was 25.4 grains and 2,867 feet per second, the very fastest velocity we've hit in this series start to spot some ejector marks five pieces of brass is just too many to hold there we go three is much more manageable yeah a little mark on that dude there that dude there but still not bad right that those primers don't look particularly flattened maybe a little bit of cratering there but nothing terrible but i can assure you at 2867 feet per second we were way over pressure like we were Trust me, if there was another 100 feet per second to safely get by using Power Pro Varmint, then I'm sure Black Hills probably would have done it long ago, right? So I guess just let, that, let this be a warning to us that brass and reading brass is totally unreliable. And a chronograph is really required if you want to try and push things as a reloader, right? I think that's just all there is to it. All right, so if we move over to Vitivori N140, some light ejector marks started about halfway through, and this is, this is the max charge right here. See, pretty distinct there. 
and that guy actually raised up a pretty gnarly burr. So this was 2,716 feet per second average, and I, I just don't like what I'm seeing here. So we can add Vitivori N140 to the list of extruded powders that just don't quite get there. It's like they hit 2,700 and everything just kind of goes to crap. All right, folks, let's look at our Power Pro varmint groups first. This was really good performance, especially, uh, you know, when you put it against the other spherical powders we've tested. There have been a lot of very mediocre shooting spherical powders, ball powders. So this one, you know, I have to say it was probably on the better side of things. Now, luckily, the load that hit our velocity target, the middle one, 24.8 grains, was our best group at 0 .640 inches. That was just really good. That's just really good stuff right there. Now, I'm not sure what to say about the last group. You know, the one that really, that was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that. 2,867 feet per second is just bonkers from an 18 inch barrel. And we survived it, it was fun, but man, that's a crappy group right there. 2.147 inches, by far our worst group of the day. So overall, I am super excited about Power Pro Varmint. This far exceeded my expectations in every category. And you better believe this 24.8 grain load, we're gonna be loading that up a bunch more to uh, verify this performance. You know, I mean, our, our, our standard deviations weren't great. Velocity was a little bit all over the place, but that's been the same story with all of the ball powders for the most part as well. So it seems to be a really good comparable to Accurate 2520. You know, just like we talked about at the beginning of the video. Similar applications, similar performance, and similar charge weights. Pretty good stuff. So let's move on to Vitivori N140. I was a little bit concerned, you know, because these uh, loads were so compressed and sometimes you're cracking granules of powder and things get weird and sometimes your accuracy goes out the window and your standard deviations get goofy. But overall, this was a solid performance from Vitivori N140. So the two best groups were the first and the last. The first was a 0.446 incher and the last group was a 0.527 inch group. I would say that uh, just from the pressure signs I saw, I definitely wouldn't want to shoot 24.7 again. 24.4 was pretty good. Brass looked pretty okay. So pretty good performance, pretty good accuracy, similar velocities to a whole bunch of the other extruded powders we've tested, like Vargat and 4895 and several others. It seems to be, you know, up to 2,700 feet per second, they're, they're in good shape, but it's been the rare exception. 8208 XBR seems to be okay. We can push it just a little bit. And Vitivori N540 from the last video did a pretty good job, but N140 didn't quite get us there. So overall, I'd have to say pretty good little video. Shot some pretty good groups. Varmint turned out to be a serious performer. So it's all good. Now, those of you following along, you will, you will remember that before the last video, I swapped barrels between my 223 and my 224 Valkyrie. 224 Valkyrie is not shooting all that well, and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't something messed up with the upper. So I think from the last video and today's video, we've definitely proven that this upper and this handguard and stuff shoots just fine. So we can't really blame our 224 Valkyrie problems on equipment it doesn't look like. Speaking of 224 Valkyrie, I got a big bag of Starline brass in the mail today. So that is probably going to be the next video on the channel, is our next 224 Valkyrie video. We'll do some tests with some new brass. We'll have the, you know, the barrels in the new upper configuration now. So that's probably going to be our next video. Our next 223 video is probably going to be these. This is, these are uh, cutting edge bullets. This is a 65 grain copper solid match tactical hunting bullet, 65 grainer. One of my supporters on Patreon bought these, wanted me to test them out, and I want to test them in some ballistics gel as well because I'm not really sure how they're supposed to expand. So that's probably the short-term timeline here. I'll probably do a 224 Valkyrie video or two, then we'll be back here to 223 to test the cutting edge bullets. That will uh, give me time to, I've got to melt down my ballistics gel and get it back ready for this video. So that's, that's the delay on that guy. And by the time all that's over, our 308 barrel for our AR-10 is probably going to be here. So that's the short-term plan. I hope you will join me for all of it. I will see you guys next time.